Welcome to Shock to the Series. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 16 of Shock to the Series. Of course, we are still in the middle of One Shot Month, and we are taking a look today at WWE all stars. Of course, the WWE games generally come out uh, once a year. You generally get one a year, and uh, it's just the numbered series. So, WWE 2019 was the latest one. 2K19, excuse me. 2K19 was the latest one with AJ Styles on the front, and of course, the million dollar uh, tower challenge thing. Anyway which I'm going to be attempting later. So I'm a little behind on that just because of work and everything else and trying to get my PlayStation fixed. Uh, but WB All-Stars was completely different than... Um, not completely. Not completely. It wasn't like uh, WB Mortals on the phone, which was in the vein of like Injustice. I think it was actually made by NetherRealm, I think. Um, and it was definitely more of a fighter. They all had special moves and you did you know, special stuff and... They had different costumes and things that gave them different powers and abilities, which was really interesting. And it was all based on some of it. Most of it wasn't actually based on anything. Like John Cena had this like super evolution, like superhero gear, and Biggie Langston had like some sort of I think like primal caveman leather fur outfit. Um, but All Stars took the basic wrestling um, of like the 2K19 and stuff like that, and instead of um, Instead of just making another wrestling simulator, which is what basically the 2K games are, they took they shrank the roster immensely. I'm I'm thinking, if I remember right, I want to say this had maybe 15 wrestlers at the start, and then like six more through DLC, or like 12 at the start and six more through DLC. Uh, and you could create your own. There was still a create your own option, which I love. Uh, their creation suites in games. St stuff where you can create your own character always excites me. It doesn't matter if a game. Um, WWE, it can be stuff like Diablo where you get a little character creation. It can be stuff like Skylanders where you get character creation. Um, so pretty much anything kind of creating your own character helps me feel more into the game because I have control over some aspects of it instead of, hey, look, it's Mario again. Hey, look, it's Link again. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what they're going to be wearing this time. <laughs> Um, even if I'm not changing it up a lot, um, it's still nice to just be able to create these characters and create, in like the review case, is my version of me. But anyway, uh, going back to what makes it different is the fact that it's completely over the top um, as far as physics. Um, it basically throws regular physics out the window. And so, for example, if uh, you hit a... You know, if, if Rock hits a rock bottom, because I'm 99 points of certain rocks in there, you hit a rock bottom with Rock, he does the thing, he flips her arm over his shoulder, but instead of just down, he jumps, you know, 20 feet in the air, spins, and then does it. It's completely unnecessary. Over something like an elbow drop, when it's a signature or a finisher, you backflip from wherever you are up to the top rope. It can be from anywhere. Um, you can go from the floor. You can go from one side of the ring to another, just depending, uh, more or less, uh, basically the center of the ring to any of the four poses. And you just flip up to the nearest post, and then you do the spinning elbow drop through the air. That's completely ridiculous and unnecessary, but so much fun. And you had like four different styles for that a wrestler could fall under. There was like a striker style where you could power up your strikes and get this golden glow by holding Y and it would power up all your strikes. So it was good for more combos. And then you had the powerhouses like Big Show and Andre the Giant who could charge up one massive shot and just send a smaller character clear across the ring. It was hilarious. <laughs> You could pop people up into the air. You could juggle wrestlers. That was, I think, the funnest thing everybody had was if you popped up a wrestler, you could actually just keep them up there, keep them juggling. And it, it allowed for some insane stuff. You'd pop a wrestler into the air, and then you would go to counter, and you could spin them out of the suplex, but they could counter into something crazy of their own. And you had the, uh, the high flyer wrestlers who... Again, were more kind of, you know, they would be the ones performing the springboards and jumping all the way, and they could, you know, just fly from pretty much anywhere, and it was insane. I forget what the fourth type was off the top of my head. Um, I'm really bad. It's been a while since I've played the game, just because I don't have it, and that thing came out on Xbox 360. I've still got my 360. I could always 
get the game again if I really wanted to. And I, I probably will at some point because I really do because it's actually a heck of a lot of fun and that's why I wanted to come back. I, I, I think the WWE 2K series is is okay. I think it's all right. The problem that I always had with these sports games that come out every year is a year is not a lot of time for anything innovative. A year is not a lot of time. And the problem with the WWE games and like the football ones and stuff too is that they can't get everybody in most of the time. The current NXT champion, Tommaso Ciampa, is not in WWE 2K19. And he... And it's all because of whatever injury he did. He was not able, I guess, to be there for, like, motion capture or whatever. But, like, Johnny Gargano's in there and several other, like, kind of lower-level NXT stars, but not Tommaso. And that's really weird. And sometimes that's just kind of the problem you run into. It's, yeah, this roster is so big, but you do recognize omissions. And it's I can see where it's kind of the same thing with Smash Brothers, but I can't. It, it's, it's also not, because Smash Brothers, we do get the cream of the crop. I don't think Waluigi counts as the cream of the crop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me go ahead and apologize in advance for that. I think Waluigi's a lot of fun. But... He's not even something. He hasn't even been as well developed as like Wario. Um, but that's. But again, it was kind of a double edged sword with All Stars going back to the game I'm actually supposed to be talking about because that roster was so limited. Um, so I'd love to see a WWE All Stars 2 with a much expanded roster. Today, you can have the likes of Braun Strowman. He picks up for the running power slam and he does the spin and he jumps into the air and spins around with everyone on his shoulder and boom, drives you back to the mat. Or Brock Lesnar, I don't think was in the first one. And F5, where instead of just, you know, whoom, and down to the mat, he just, you know, it's, it's like a tornado lifted you. It's like an after F5 tornado lifts you up and you just spin and then hit the mat. Um, you can have the likes of who else is new um, that I could think of something to do with. Um, I mean, Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins would be great with the stomp. He just your rockets into the air and comes crashing down on your skull. I mean, basically make it all like, um, sort of like how, uh, sort of the anti, like when he was facing Randy Orton, he was a bad guy and Orton, he went for the stomp on Orton and Orton popped him up and he jumped and he went about eight feet in the air before coming down to an RKO, like doing that, but actually making it effective as a stomp. Um, <laughs> You know, and over on SmackDown, you get, like, AJ Styles, um, the phenomenal forearm. I mean, geez, that, that writes itself. He just springs up and, you know, he just comes rocket forearm down. Um, and Daniel Bryan, you could do some sort of, like, pinball running knee almost where he just, you know, he runs. You could have him run the ropes a couple times until he gets faster and faster and faster and finally, poof, knee to the skull. Stuff like that. Even some of the divas, um... You know, some of the submissions, the submissions aren't as flashy, so, like, the figure eight wouldn't really be as flashy, neither would the Oscar lock. Um, but, like, Bailey, Bailey's Bailey to Belly, you know, you could have the slam. I mean, a lot of it would be a little repetitive, unfortunately, because there's really only so much you can do. I mean, you could, like, Bailey, you could do, like, a triple Bailey to Belly or something, where it's, like, one, two, and then you soup up for the three. But, um, so I think, I think, and especially with the engines and the graphics today. And that's the thing. It was all, like I said, completely over the top. They were all, it was those big, beefy, muscular wrestlers. You know, it wasn't these, like, realistic proportions. It was, you know, <laughs> you know. And, you know, it only had, like, six arenas. So it was really simple. So I think with a little more, we could really get an amazing sequel. Uh but what do you guys think? Do you want the All-Stars to come back? Or should we stick with just the traditional 2K wrestling stuff that we've been getting every year? Post your opinion in the top right. And next week, uh, next last week of One Shot Month, we are going to take a look at a game that came out on both Dreamcube, Dreamcube Dreamcast, <laughs> and GameCube. But it was essentially the same game. They basically just released it on GameCube to get it to more people. And I think it had a little bit more, but it wasn't really like a sequel. So it doesn't really count as a series. And I absolutely wish it was a series. It's in one of my favorite genres. It's an RPG. Um, and it involves 
you know, great special attacks, a fun story, and a bunch of Sky Pirates. That's it for this one, guys. That is Lights Out on Shock to the Series, WWE All-Stars.